could ask you a question. Uh, maybe. Depends well, on the I'm going to ask it anyways. Hey, <laughs> did you go to church this weekend? Uh, no, I didn't actually. <gasps> I was visiting my parents. Oh, well, it was, well, it was Thanksgiving. Was You're off the hook. But yeah. when you go to church, what kind of a church do you go to? Uh, is it a small church? Is it a big church? Medium. Medium-sized medium church. church? Okay. Yeah. Is there, well, now I'm pastoring at a large church. It's like there's 2,000 people over three services, you know, every Sunday, every Sunday morning. And I came across this article, actually, just before I started at the church, and it's called The Astonishing Power of Small Churches. Mm. Everybody wants to be a part of a big church because, you know, it's got the best facilities. It's got, you know, all the money to do all the big events. But there's something about a small church. And the article goes through a number of things. And it kind of goes back to the very beginning of the church movement, right mm. after the day of Pentecost, after the, the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. And the disciples all met together, but they met together in these small groups. And even to this very day, all around the world, I mean, there's a few big churches. You know, every country has their, their big mega churches. But... The, the backbone of the church is actually made up primarily of small churches. Hmm. I mean, you've been to other countries, and oh, when, yeah. when you've gone, have they been smaller churches? Absolutely, yeah, generally small churches. And I love what this article says, okay. over a billion people yeah, in the world worship Jesus in small churches. You know, I've done stories out in the West Coast. I remember this Presbyterian church of 100 people, and they started this uh, community garden project. They had the Sunday school involved, and they would grow all these vegetables, mm. you know, the great weather they have out in BC, grow all these vegetables. <laughs> and they would give it to food banks. They'd even get the kindergarten kids to go and take it to the food bank and they were growing tons of food and literally making a difference where these food banks would just have dry food. Now they have all this fresh vegetable. Mm. And I remember thinking, this is like the little church that could. You know, they don't have a ton <laughs> of people, but they could. were all <laughs> engaged and they were all determined. And I've seen it over and over in the stories I've done across Canada. It's just little churches having a huge impact. Yeah, little churches with, with a big heart. The article goes on, I think we, we have the same article here. It goes on to say that there are five things that small churches need from us as, you know, the, the larger, the, the body of Christ. They need to be supported, okay? They need to be valued. They need to be resourced. They need to be networked and they need to be celebrated. Hmm. Wow. So what do you think of that? That's a great challenge. Maybe you're, now that you're a teaching pastor mm. of a large church, mm -hmm. maybe you could adopt a small church. You know, just well, an idea, Portico. Just you know, saying. not Portico. <laughs> Put them on the spot. I'm sure they really love me now. Th thank you, Cheryl Weber, <laughs> as always. Uh, no, no, Portico is doing exactly what you're talking about, like branching out and starting these smaller churches in different parts of the GTA. Because mm -hmm. one of the, the great things about being a large church is that you have the resources and the people to be able to empower a small church to go out into their communities, and those yeah. churches will grow. And just like in the natural, what happens... How do things grow is they, they multiply, right? They divide, mm -hmm. then they multiply. They yeah. divide, they multiply. Instead of trying to push out and become one massive church, I think it's more powerful when you can have all these little churches working because a lot of times small churches have the biggest hearts. It's true. You know, I, I've traveled all around the world. I've been, oh my goodness, all over Southeast Asia. You have to in Thailand, yeah. Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, just, just wherever. And so many of them are small churches, but I got to right. tell you, some of the sweetest people I have ever met in my life come from these small churches. Yep. And as not just as a pastor, but as a, as a fellow believer, I just want to take a moment and talk to any pastors who are watching today. You know, I know that the pastors of the big churches, you know, maybe get a little more attention and more media and all that kind of stuff. But don't you for a second, if you're a pastor of a small church or if you attend a small church, if you're a, a Bible teacher or a Sunday school teacher, a nursery worker, whatever, at a small church, can I just say a huge, huge thank you? And don't be discouraged and don't give up because when we are faithful in the little things, the Bible says that God will make us over the bigger things. So thank you for what you do and never stop doing it and don't right. doubt what God is doing in you. Yeah. And, and also, real. yeah, and, and God measures success differently than we do and he doesn't do it by numbers. I he does so. it by faithfulness, by heart. Absolutely. And sometimes you're called to be a pastor of a smaller church that does those great things. Yeah. You talk about numbers. I had uh, this evangelist come through my church years ago one time and we had a kind of a small group turn out and I was a little disappointed. I was hoping for a bigger number because he was kind of a big deal and I wanted hundreds of yeah, people to come. Yeah, feel responsible. Yeah. And only yeah. tens came out and he said to me, he said, Joe, we're no longer in the book of numbers. We're in the book of Acts. Hmm. And I went, huh. 
I like that. Don't look at the size of the congregation. Don't look at the size of, of, of the people who were there. Totally. With 12 men and women, God changed the world. Love that. Love yeah. that.